here in our console we've got all of our electronics and all of our wiring and all that stuff and we were actually just talking about this on one of our last podcasts about troubleshooting the NEMA network and that's actually what we've got to do today is this right here is called a backbone it's actually how all the electronics in the boat talk to each other from your radar to your autopilot to your GPS and everything that's on the electronic network talks to each other through this backbone and we've actually got a little bit of a trouble with this network um, it's got some random issues going on so today we're going to show you how to troubleshoot this network pretty quickly and pretty easily so this backbone here is all connected it starts here on the end with this terminator and it ends at this end with this terminator now this little wire here in the middle connects it you can see this comes from here goes around to here comes back over and connects to there goes over something that you don't really want to see is like this how this is bent you don't really want any kind of bends in these at all you want this to be straight all the way across this is actually really good a lot of times you'll see people take this and zip tie it to something else and it'll actually bend all these t's but this one looks pretty good so these terminators are going to be 120 ohms and they will come off so we're going to take these two off and make sure that they have 120 ohms of resistance on them before we do anything with this this yellow cable right here in the middle is our clean power for the backbone and so we need to come over here and i've already found it it's this fuse here we're going to take this fuse out so there's no power on the network for this moment Then once we get all these resistors off of here, there's two pins in there, and then there's actually all the pins in this one. So whether you've got one or the other, doesn't really matter. We need to check for resistance on this. And on this one, you can see you've got this little notch here at the top. We're gonna take this notch, and from that, we're gonna go to the middle. in that bottom corner. Make sure you don't put a meter too far into here and spread these pins open. But see that's got 119 ohms. That means that's a good terminator. You want it to be right around 120 ohms. Same thing for this one. This one actually only has two pins in it. So, but either way, Got 118.7 ohms, that's a good terminator too. So we know that both of these terminators are good. So now what we need to do is we're gonna take this terminator right here, and we're gonna put it back on the backbone. So once you get that on the backbone, you can plug that in like that make sure she's tight i'll go ahead and high and tighten that when i'm not holding this camera when i got two hands but also all these so like this right here this is loose it's not even connected that's one problem right there that could be our entire issue for everything so i'm going to tighten that up and then we're going to check for resistance on this end of the backbone So all I did was took a, another NEMA cable, plugged it in where the terminator was so that I can get to this end right here and be able to check the resistance of these pins, which is going to tell me if we've got data communication all the way across the entire backbone with no drops in it. 129 ohms of resistance. So there is way more resistance on this backbone than there needs to be. And so now we need to figure out why it has an extra 10 ohms of resistance. So what we're going to do is basically I want to go, we tested it here. We're going to test it here just because this is kind of a separate network. I think this has to do with the engines. Um, that's why this power isolator is here. So that way I'm guessing that this backbone right here gets its power from the engine side of thing from the Suzuki side of stuff 
where uh, and that's what this power isolator does make sure that the power can't get back over to here so you can turn this network off without turning this network off so we're going to unplug this move this cable over to here and check again to see if that terminator shows up fully right here and if maybe we have a problem here or if it isn't really a problem at all you know what i mean yeah no they they split it because of this a bunch of the wires going through there Is that the freshwater pump down there? So we got uh, 118 ohms of resistance. So we're showing that everything's good from here over to here. So what we're going to do is hook this back up, unplug these two, plug our cable into this one, and then see it what our resistance is. And we're going to go from each one all the way down this line to see which one that we add adds that resistance that we saw on the network. Okay, we've got 119 ohms of resistance, and um, we are just got this plugged into there. So our T's and this isolator and all that still pretty good. Um, it went up one ohm, but that's not a nothing to get concerned about. So now I'm gonna move this over probably to here, and then I'm gonna plug these in one at a time and watch that resistance as I plug each one of those in one at a time. How what's the resistance? 129. Oh. Debt behind. All right, so actually now I'm down to 121. We're at 121 with those two items hooked up. Actually, 120. Yeah, so 120.7. That's actually not too bad. I think there might just, or maybe one of these, one of these T fittings, because as I you know you move this thing around like that and maybe that's adding resistance but right now i only have one thing disconnected everything else is hooked up and we are getting right at 120 ohms of resistance check that one more time now that i was up there wiggling it yep 120 which is a good number that's exactly what you want to see i mean a little it's it's more than you want but it's i mean it's right on the money i thought you want 120. you do but it, you usually don't see 120. what do you normally see like 118 119. Oh. 119. all right we are now right on the money we probably just had a loose connection between one of these T fittings or as I was moving it around and unplugged them and plugged them back in that took care of our problem which can happen because um, people will try and tighten these up and they won't get tight or they'll loosen up over time um, I'm going to strap these back up and make sure one more time before I you know fully secure it that one of these because you do see these T fittings right here go bad but right now we've got good numbers i'm going to tighten this up and check our resistance to make sure that it's nothing and looks like our only problem was just a loose connection we're at 120 checking our resistance and we've got everything strapped back up so it looks like just i mean there was a loose connection here there were some loose connections here this was a little loose on on this end so i'm gonna put the terminator back on there now i wanted to show you what the resistances are with this and this terminator when you put both of them on the network it cuts them in half so you're going to be wanting to see right around 60 ohms of resistance with two terminators on the network so if you see you know 30 or 40 or stuff like that that means you got an extra terminator on the on the backbone or somewhere in the network so you got 60 um, 61 ohms of resistance and that's with both of our terminators in in place which is exactly what you want to see and that'll be that that's pretty much how you test a NEMA 2000 network